hey everybody, it's another Tool Tuesday, and I wanted to tell you about something that you may not think of as a tool, but it's absolutely necessary, and that would be electric bike chargers. So here are seven things that everyone should know about chargers for electric bikes. Roll the intro. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Number one, something that I thought was obvious, but I've been around electric bikes for a while. If you have an electric bike already, this is completely obvious. But if you haven't, this is a very valid question. And that is, do e-bikes come with a charger? And the answer is yes. Now, at first I was wondering why are people asking this question, but I was thinking back to some of my radio controlled airplane and radio controlled truck days and with those, and it still is this way today, you would buy the kit, you would buy the charger separately, you'd buy the battery separately. So it only makes sense that people might be a little bit confused when it's not clearly stated that yes, e-bikes come with a charger. Number two, are the chargers universal? And the answer to that is a definite no. First and foremost, voltages can be very different between chargers. And in fact, the labels can be a little confusing. For example, this one says 54.6 volt output. Well, when you think about electric bikes or you see them advertised online, typically you see them advertised as 36 volts, 48 volts, and sometimes 52 volts. So what does a 54.6 volt charger even go to? Well, the answer is 48 volts. You see, the voltage is the nominal or the typical voltage while you're actually using the bike and riding. It's not the maximum voltage or the charge voltage. So these are not always labeled the same either. Some you will see an output stated as 54.6 volts for a 48 volt battery. Others might simply say 48 volts. The same applies for a 36 volt charger. Some will say 36 volts. Some will say the actual charge voltage, which is 42 volts. So if you have multiple bikes, make sure to label them if they have different voltages so you're always using the correct one. Number three is the watts or amps that are going through the controller. Sometimes people are asking me how many watts is a certain charger or how many amps does it charge at. What they really want to know is how fast will my battery charge? And that is a variable question depending on the battery, voltage, the amp hours. So you have to do a little math sometimes to figure that out. So what I prefer to do is look at the amps on the charger because that's a simpler way to find the answer to the question. So for example, this one says on the label that it is a two amp charger. Now if we have a 48 volt battery and it's a 10 amp hour, well if it's charging at two amps, that means it's gonna take five hours two amps times five hours equals 10 amp hours. So some very simple math to see how long will it take to charge a given battery with a given charger. So if you wanna charge 50% faster, you would need to bump up to a three amp charger. If you went all the way up to say a five amp charger, that means it's going to charge in only two hours. Now that brings me to number four, which is the type of plug that comes on the charger. So this is a pretty basic charger that's standard for most electric bikes. Some of them have an XLR three pin connector like this one on one end. And then typically you have an AC adapter type cord on the other. So it can work with either 110 or 220 volts. So this one of course has the right plug for a 110 US outlet. If you're in Europe or another country that uses 220, the charger should come with the appropriate cord for your country. If for some reason they screw up, all you need to do is buy this cord. You don't need to go find a different charger. Ones like this automatically switch back and forth between the two. Now back to the charging cord itself. These are good for three amps or five amps. They actually do pretty well at various levels. So. This, in a way, is better than the smaller barrel-type connectors you see on some others. 
And when I say barrel connector, this is the type I'm referring to. So these typically will max out at two amps. If you charge or try to charge something with this type of connector at three amps or more, they tend to get too hot and they can't handle it. So if you see a charger like this, it's pretty safe to assume it's rated at two amps or less. And charger tip number five, if you get up to a slightly larger charger like this one, they typically have a fan that's built in. Not necessarily better if a charger has a fan. All else being equal, I would say yes, but I'm gonna show you one that's nicer than this and it doesn't have a fan. But what I wanted to show you is that these, instead of automatically switching between 110 and 220, typically have a switch right here. Now, because most of the chargers are made overseas in Asia, they are often set to 220. So what happens is if you're in the US, you get one of these with your new battery, you go to plug it in and nothing happens. It doesn't charge. Well, usually this switch is in the wrong position. So just flip that over to 110 and it will probably start working just fine. And tip number six on e-bike chargers is should you leave it on the charger when it's done or should you pull it off? Does it overcharge if you leave it on the charger? What exactly happens when you plug in a battery to one of these and leave it there? So there's a small LED light in the corner of this charger. On most lights, there is at least a, a single light that is red while charging and green when it's done. Or some of them have two LEDs. Usually one is red and they both turn green when the battery is done charging. So these do stop charging when the battery is full. So there's no real danger with leaving it on. In fact, if your battery is relatively new, you may want to leave it on because when a battery is still connected to the charger, that actually gives the BMS, which is the circuit inside the battery, some time to balance the cells. So it's actually a good idea to leave it on for a little bit longer every once in a while and give it some time to balance. Now, if you know it's balanced, everything's working well, I would recommend that when it's charged, unplug it. What you don't want to do is leave it plugged in all the time every day of the week. Basically, a battery loses a little bit of voltage at all times. There's a very slow but sure drain on the voltage no matter what you're doing with the battery or where it's sitting. So if the battery drains slightly, the charger's going to charge it right back up. And so basically you're getting the charge cycles in a continual mode. So in essence, you're wearing out your battery, although very slowly, if you leave it charged in 20, excuse me, if you leave it plugged in 24 seven. So once it's charged, go ahead and unplug it. And finally, tip number seven, all of the chargers I've showed you so far, charge the battery up to 100%. However, it is better for a battery if you only charge to 90% as far as its overall lifespan. So how many years it will last or how many cycles it will last, it will go further if it doesn't get a 100% charge every time. So you can buy some chargers that are more advanced like the cycle satiator that have some special functions. You could charge to 80% or 90%. So this charger, although expensive at about 300 bucks, if you have a bunch of different e-bikes or different electrical things you need to charge, this can be really handy. Not only can you set different profiles for a specific battery, you can actually charge different types of batteries with this, whether it's lead acid or lithium ion batteries like on electric bikes, you can set the amps it charges at so you could charge the battery slower or if you're in a hurry, you can charge the battery faster. So I really like having this around the shop because it works for basically any battery that I have by just changing the plug on the end. You can buy adapters that go from the three pin XLR to the smaller barrel connector. And this can charge at any amperage or voltage that I have in the shop. Of course, everything has its limitations, but a 36 volt, 48 volt up to a 60 volt and even 72 volt battery can be charged with this. Now as an added bonus, this is designed to be incredibly durable. So you can actually mount this to your bike. So it can withstand the vibrations 
And that means you can have a charger all the time on your bike and just find an outlet to plug it into. So once again, it is rather expensive at 300 bucks, but it has its place. I like it. Probably one of the most common things I use it for is checking battery capacity when a battery is drained down. When you plug it in, this will actually track and tell you how many amp hours you've put back in. So really handy, does a lot of different things. There's more and more that it can do than I could possibly cover in this video. So I may have to do a separate one that goes into more in depth for this particular charger. Thanks again for watching another one of my videos. As you can tell, I like to have my e-bike batteries charged up because it's no fun if your battery is dead and you get to a hill. Make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe, also hit that little bell right next to it. That way you get new notifications when videos come out. Now, I have this cool t-shirt that I'm wearing. It's something that I designed and put on my website. You're welcome to go there and buy one. I'll put a link in the description. But leave a comment and I'll randomly pick somebody in the first 24 hours to go ahead and win one of these and you'll get it for free. Thanks again for watching Bolton e-bikes. This has been another Tool Tuesday and I'll be back again soon.